My name is Kristen Gislason Palmer, and I'm running for New Orleans City Council, District C. Well, thank you, Ms. Palmer. How are you today? I'm fine, Anthony. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for being here. Um, on behalf of NewOrleansBlack.com and NewOrleansFirst.com and over 60,000 people, uh, we're excited to get to know you better. Um, so we look forward to using this opportunity. Speaking of which, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself, maybe like a minute or so, on okay. you know, your upbringing, who you are. Who I am. I am one of eight children, all right. actually. Um, I was actually born in Washington, D.C., but I've lived in New Orleans all my life. My mother's family is from New Orleans, and uh, I'm the second oldest. And so I have like five younger sisters and a younger brother and one older brother. And almost the majority of us are all still in New Orleans, which is one thing I think we all kind of strive for, is for, to keep our family <laughs> close. Um, I went to Ursuline for high okay. school. Um, I went to a public school, went to John Dybert for elementary, Ursuline for high school. I went away to college, St. Louis University. Oh, yeah. Jesuit. Slew, yeah. Yeah, Slew. Slew. You know Slew? Oh, sure. Go Billikens. <laughs> and uh, I did that, and then I came back after college, because this is, I think, my home. Mm -hmm. And I started working in the communities and volunteering when I came back, actually right around the corner from here in the St. Thomas Housing Development. I worked over at Hope House for a little bit, and that kind of got me into working in community development and housing. Okay. And so that's, so I've now become a housing executive, I guess you could say, nonprofit executive. And so my, most of my work has been within the nonprofit realm. Well, that's phenomenal. Um, someone as successful as what you've become, and, and particularly when I say success, I mean from really doing community work. Mm -hmm. And we've talked just a, a moment before. Um, why run for office? I mean, what is, what is this about? What's, what's your motivation? Well, for me, the primary motivation is, I think, post-Katrina, everybody in our community has recognized that the, that the heavy lifting and the rebuilding has been done at the community level. It's right. been done by nonprofits, it's been done by our churches, our volunteers, our neighborhood associations, our, our private businesses. Mm -hmm. And it's really been a, a wonderful thing to, to observe, and that whole sense of civic engagement. I've been very intimately involved with that for the past three and a half years. I've okay. been director of Rebuilding Together New Orleans, and we've been very involved in the community and rebuilding houses for our low-income folk um, across the city. And so I know what's working, and I know what's not working. Now, what's different about um, affordable housing versus what you're talking about? Is it the same conversation, well, no, or what is it? I'm dealing with existing home ownership. Okay. Our mission is to improve the quality of life of our low-income, elderly, and physically disabled homeowners. Good. And we do that through home repair. Our program was started um, as a way of stopping gentrification. Often, in some of our neighborhoods where we have neighborhood revitalization efforts, it can push out existing homeowners. Wow. People have lived That's there powerful. for years. And so our program was created 20 years ago to ensure that does not happen. Hmm. And so, you know, we've been around for, like I said, about 21 years. And so post-Katrina, it actually took on another level. Okay. Before the storm, we would focus on keeping homeowners in the houses, do a lot of quality of life repairs, handicap ramps, exterior lighting. Post-Katrina, we've literally been putting people back in their houses that they had and finding where they're living and, and, uh, and you know, find they live out of town with family members to come back home. And that's really what we've been focusing That's powerful. On. That's mm -hmm. powerful. And it, and it leads me to the next question around just diversity. Because, mm -hmm. you know, anybody in a leadership role in this community needs to, we think, understand and have a sensitivity to diversity. Talk about, you know, your understanding of diversity and, and, and even take it a step further and talk a little bit about your ability to have inclusion in diversity and in, in, mm -hmm. in being a city council person. That, that's a great question. Um, one of my underlying uh, philosophies is that um, New Orleans actually has a lot of strength in our diversity. And I think often we get so focused on diversity as being a part of contention and separate. And right. I, I don't really view it that way. Um, we are an incredibly diverse city, uh, racially, socioeconomically. That's right. Um, I've always found the beauty in that, especially in our neighborhoods and our communities, because each of our neighborhoods, they could be right up next to each other, and they're fiercely different and independent. That's a whole other level of diversity <laughs> there. And, and I've been serving a very diverse um, clientele, shall we right, say, that's for weird. many years. Oh, absolutely. And the majority, um, in fact, the homeowners that we serve through Real Rebuilding Together in New Orleans, 97% of them are African American. Mm. About 70% of them are female heads of households. Um, the average annual income 
of my homeowners fourteen thousand five hundred dollars. And they get to own a house. And they own. They live in their house. Wow. They, these houses have been in their families for generations. We okay. see that a lot in New Orleans. Um, they're retired folk, or they're physically disabled, and they're not allowed to. You know, they just can't work anymore. These this population have built, has built the city of New Orleans already. And just because they're they're elderly, or you know they're confined to their home mm -hmm. or trailer or what have you, uh, does not mean they they're not viable um, into our community. And I think it also speaks to our diversity and the importance of this population, because I often have said that you can't move a city forward unless you know where it's been. Right. And so you have to also kind of pay homage to that as well, to Absolutely. our to our elderly folk who built the city first before us. So diversity is a very important thing to me. Um, I think it speaks to New Orleans um, and how we, how we have to govern. And so I think that leads to the next question that you said, how can you ensure inclusion right. in, um, in how you govern, especially as you know, I'm, I'm a white person and, and you know, basically I'm going for a majority African American district. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a, a very viable question. And I think one of the things that I've um, always done within every profession I've had within every job is that you have to work with the community. For instance, we do not go into a neighborhood unless our presence is requested mm -hmm. by a neighborhood organization or a group that represents that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And so then they sit on our board. There's a member from the community that sits on our board mm -hmm. that assists in finding houses, that volunteers us throughout the year, and really helps us create policy. You need that sense. You know, it might be my city, but it's not my neighborhood. No, it's but not you're my right, community. and I, it seems like so much of that is missed. It is most missed. of the time. They don't do the proper community engagement before they take on exactly. Projects. And you have to listen to the people of the community. And so, if you look on our website, what we're doing is we're, we're going to set up standing committees within District C that are made up of of folks from District C. Good. Um, from all parts, and so one will be focused on economic development, one on crime, one on youth services, one on blight, um, and it's going to be very important to um, to have that discussion, and then that's what's going to lead to our policy discussions and and how we make our decisions yeah. in the office. It sounds like you already have a plan. We definitely have a plan. Uh, we are going to ask the Facebook question now. Okay. Okay. Uh, this comes from one of our friends on Facebook. Deshaun James says, how can urban communities get better funding for things like boys and girls clubs and local parks and community centers? Okay, that's, um, I'm going to answer this in a few different ways. Um, one of the ways is I actually started a nonprofit when I was um, a mother. Well, I'm still a mother of three daughters. And when they were very young, our parks were in deplorable condition. And so as a community, we got together. We incorporated, we called it Confetti Kids. And we rebuilt, we raised money and rebuilt our parks and playgrounds because, and this was before the storm, because our government and NORD were so ineffectual and we really recognized it. And we have to have this discussion about our parks and playgrounds. I think often we have discussions about crime, but we don't focus on the youth services and what we can offer to our children. So I'm a firm believer in public-private partnerships um, and finding these resources and getting them into the neighborhoods as quickly as possible. Um, I would be a very strong proponent of revamping NORD and focusing very heavily to make sure that our children have the resources that they need. Um, I've fundraised all over the country and raised millions of dollars for our neighborhoods and our communities, and I feel that we, we still have an opportunity to do so and to improve our, our parks and playgrounds. And then one final plug I would like to give that okay. I think is very important, and especially for, for your audience, is the census 2010. Yes, indeed. The census is going to determine where our funding comes from from the feds for the next 10 years. And so we need to ensure that everybody is counted. And, those, and that census is really going to be a direct link to how much resources we're going to get back to the city. And so we need all of our people to be counted in order to ensure that we get the money so we can redo our books. Well, I think we have 30 seconds left. If you, uh, thank you for the interview. Well, thank you. And if you would, please um, talk with the audience and remind them who you are to vote for you. Great. Uh, my name is Kristen Gisselson Palmer. I'm running for City Council, District C in New Orleans. It's a wonderful district. It's all of Algiers. It's the French Quarter, Bywater, Faubourg Marigny, Faubourg St. Rock, Esplanade Ridge and Treme, and Faubourg St. John. I've worked in all of these communities over the past 20 years, and in housing, and in parks and playground redevelopment, and within our public schools. And I would like your support. I need your support, and I will bring you with me to office. So thank you.